Welcome back to the URM Academy YouTube channel where we help you kick ass at mixing. I'm Joel Wanasek. Remember to hit that subscribe button and the little bell thing to make sure that you get notified every time we post a new video. This video is a serious knowledge bomb. Nasheen shows you what he calls key spikes, which are basically phase accurate MIDI notes that he puts on every single drum hit in the session and uses in all kinds of very cool creative ways like triggering gates and compressors in ways that are pretty much impossible to do with raw audio. This is pretty damn mind blowing stuff. Let us know what you think of this one in the comments and if you want instant access to the full session, just click the link in the description below. What I do is I program all my gates. So, and I talk, I, I, I boast about how I change a lot, of, a lot of my approaches from record to record, which is true. But uh, this actually is one thing that is consistent. I will do on every record of every genre is I will, I will put a MIDI note, a phase accurate MIDI note on every drum. And I'll show you what happens. I'll describe it first. And, and I, I, there's so many things that I can do with that MIDI note musically. Um, from, you know, from choosing samples to, to keying gates to keying other things to me, and, and so on and so forth. And you're gonna see a number of them today on this mix and there's a, num a number you're not gonna see because it's not um, a whole performed drum kit in, in one pass. But so let's grab, uh, I'm gonna show you how I MIDI up some of these, but let's grab, um, let's grab the MIDI and start printing these key spikes. What are key spikes? Let's listen to the snare. It's already done, but let's, let's, let's go do some for you. That is something I made. All it is is the tiniest little instantaneous on-off blip. And I'll print that as something that's perfectly constant, exact same level, and turns on and off as fast as possible. And that is that, that will say per se be the snare one, and that will be used uh, first and foremost to to key gates, gates, um, gates and compressors. Uh, you know, as most of you guys know, usually we we operate and use those as they listen to the audio coming into them, and there's a threshold point, and they react on that. That's great. Um, when it comes to, for me, when it comes to gating, um, I want utter perfect musical control. I mean, super control. I mean, these MIDI notes are phase accurate to these drum hits where I can therefore, since I'm using them to key my gates, I can literally program my gates like uh, I could slow the attack. I could change the length to a perfectly cool music length. I can make them longer, shorter. I can use them to duck compressors at exact times. I could move that back a fraction of a second and get something to duck out of the way of something else a millisecond before it even happens. It's just, it's an endless array of trickery that I get with these key spikes. So um, to me, it's really important and it's really important that they're even phase accurate because if I was going to use that MIDI to uh, layer something with a drum sample, which we don't have to do on Lamb of God because we were so cool the way we did it, um, then again, the, the phase accuracy of that, of that MIDI note is going to make the blend of your, your drum sample with your real drum super crucial. I don't even want those samples to ever even go out of phase. That's how accurate I want them. So we, in the past, we've had a, a bunch of different ways of doing this. To demonstrate, yeah. yeah. Know that the MIDI notes are phase accurate. Yes. So truth is, is, I'm very fortunate to have assistants do this most all the time, but I do do it as well. So, and it's a long, it's time consuming, you know? I'm not a quick mixer, guys. I'm a methodical mixer, and that's okay with me. So, this is not quick mixing. So, I'm gonna, so the snare, I'm gonna use the top snare mic, 57. That is, uh, when I'm looking at all relationships, to drum tracks to, to one another when I'm looking to where uh, the latency of 
rooms or symbols. I, the top snare drum to me is God. It's the, it's the arc. It's the foundation. It's everything. That is, and also, by the way, let's think about how people think about, listen to music. Your snare drum is really the voice of your drum kit, right? As a human species, we are trained, first and foremost, to hear a baby's cry. It's a mid-range. We could hear a baby crying like miles away as a, as a species. So our, our devices, our hearing devices, our ears, are focused, to, they're, they're dialed into mid-range. And the snare drum is really, the snare drum is really, as, let's take this super out, outside of the bubble here. The snare drum is really the voice of your, your drum kit. You know, the average Joe is not into production like us nerds are. You know, the symbols to them are like this like high-end washing over the thing. The kick drum in metal has character because the attack is so important. But in most other genres, it's like the thud that moves this thing. But yeah, your, your snare drum is your voice. It's, your, it's, it's how the drum's most speaking to the average listener. So top snare is God. So I'm going to use that to start this mini note. So, there are, so I was saying, there's many ways to do this. We used to do this, uh, Stephen Slate makes a plugin called Trigger that does this and does it quite well. And I'm a big fan of Stephen Slate stuff, which you'll see more of later. Um, we used to use a program called DTM, Drums to MIDI. It was a Pro Tools plugin that came uh, with something and it was even free. And it did a really good job of analyzing and dropping a MIDI note pretty phase accurately. And Logic 10 uh, now has incorporated a, a drums to MIDI type of thing. And what do they call it? They call it replace or double dumb drum tracks. So it just analyzed It just analyzed that. It's trying to give me a start. Uh, it, lucky for me, I'm going to kill that fly. Would you like the, uh, the tool? Here you go. Here you go. You have, you have the gauntlet. Come around me again. He's, he's on your right side, on your arm. He's on your arm. He's, on your arm. He's, on your arm. he's coming around. Yep, yep. There you go. Trust. Oh, he's gone. I'm gonna zap you. Don't mess with, don't mess with my show, fly. He'll oh. be back though. We're gonna kill this fly on the show. <laughs> it's gonna make a great zap. All right. So um, it's asking me what it is. It's a snare drum. It's probably pulled up some any snare sample at the moment. And slide. Before I commit to this, I can slide a threshold of it picking up more or less hits. This is working so well. Why? Because there's no snare bleed. There's no bleed with, um, with hi-hats and stuff, so this is working so well for us. Yes, sir. This is where, this seems like a general good setting, and I'll, I'll, hit, I'll hit OK, right, which, which generated it. And then we have to go through and anally check. And it won't be perfect. You know, really quick flams, it won't get really quick flams. You know, rolls and stuff like that, you need to decide what you want to do with your key spikes whether you want to uh, try to get all those in there. Sometimes I deliberately choose to like rolls. I, I choose to leave it out and I know that I automate my gates at that moment. And by automating, I really, really I bypass them. Because if someone's like this on a snare drum, there isn't gating issues. Because he's probably not on his cymbals at the same time. He's probably just on a snare drum. So the best sound would be to just have no gate on the snare. So let's just check a couple. 
And I'm kind of taking for granted, I'm not bouncing transient to transient like I make <laughs> some people do for me. Yeah, it's doing a, doing a real good job. It didn't pick up those toms and so on and so forth. And there you go. Like a cooking show, we did it. We go through this and make sure we're all good. Right. Okay, what's up with this? Here's three snares. Is that three snares? Let's see. So I would want to, so right, I would want to fix that. I'm going to take you, I moved that by accident, I would extend you out, I would go here, I would jump to transient, come back down to there, slice you, and now you're perfect. And so on and so forth. All right? Peace. And Voila, here's the finished one. And I put this on a, my, on, I put this to another snare drum? No, <laughs> we're not layering Lamb of God with, with fake snares. That's what we decided on this record and we painfully worked at tracking to do so. But we're talking about this theory I have of key spikes. And this is what you can get to check out right now. So right now, this sucker is going to a program that literally just called Key Spike. I'm going to put the volume all the way up on my sampler. I'm going to make sure that there is no dynamics. The velocity is all the way up. So that's literally just going to give me a consistent thing to print, right? And I'll call that snare spike. What you're going to see is it's loud. What you're going to see is we're never going to we're never going to hear this in the mix, guys. We're going to take this track, we're going to give it no output, but we're going to we're going to learn its track number, and it's going to be used to key. It's going to be used to key the uh, the gates on the snare or whatever I want to use that snare info for to fuck with something else. You know, that's just this one way we're using this MIDI. Um, that's snare done. Let me hide you again. And let's get the let's let's, let's get the kick printed. We gotta split this up, right? Because we have three you have three kick drums to deal with in this sucker. So let's start with the center. Currently not printing a key spike. It's printing a kick. So let's go to where I let's go to my key spike. Put it all the way up. Make sure the velocity on this is full maximum. I'm all I'm only on only on the center kick. Let's print that sucker. That's what? Kick main spike? Where is it, dudes? I don't know. It was on my head a second ago. Did it fly at you? It's down on my, my left ear. Oh, really? <laughs> that he's on you. Where? 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 Like back, back like your right shoulder. He's gone. 
We're going to kill yeah, this fly on this show. Definitely a formidable opponent. I'm going, oh. I'm going to feel such vindication when. I know. I know. Damn it. All right. Um, I just printed center. I got to print. I'm going to mute him and let's print kick left. That bad boy. And let's kick right. Let's print him down. And then let me just do this now instead of like realizing I, I happen to know, I probably would have forgotten this, but I happen to know that I need this later. I need one, I'm gonna need one, and we'll explain why. It's actually, believe it or not, for my bass guitar. But I'm gonna need a kick spike, which is all the kicks spiking together for my bass guitar later. So I'll just do this now. Got one yesterday. No, I was perfect. I was so slick. Yeah, I was like, yesterday was just like total Jedi shit. I know. Not Jedi right now. Right. So look at these boring little things to look at. <laughs> the first thing let's do is give them all no output because they definitely don't need an output. Just something that it's going to be looked at. And I have my color that I like them to be. And so on and so forth. So, um, I said I wanted to rush on to, rush on to getting to some compressing and mastering, but um, and not go crazy with effects or EQs or things, but I do. I want to apply some of these gates because um, I do want to apply some of these gates because they I will, they will, they will affect uh, uh, how the compression and stuff, and stuff works. You know what I mean? So, like for example, all kicks, kick right. Let me get this organized for my brain cell. There, oh, there's snare spike, which I didn't, didn't color yet. And didn't give no output. All right, cool. All right. All right, guys. So let's take, let's take this snare. Now, of course, this snare would be pissing itself with hi-hat bleed if this was any other session. But here it has, here it has, well, it was bum with the tom, so it has tom bleed, so I could show you, I could show you what it will, what it will be doing there. Um, I use the, stan the, the standard Logix DAW gate, and by the way, I think using, as an attitude, I think in today's day, 2018, using lots of your DAW's standard things. EQs, compressions, I think they're all pretty damn good. I get into a lot of other ones too, but we're all sitting good, man. So we focus on our attitude about our mixing. Um, we don't have to stress about this stuff. So I do wind up using a lot of my regular DAW stuff. So here, here's, here is Logic's gate. 
this thing and on this here is this in, in frame in this side chain I want to tell it to, to key from its key spike right so snare spike is that which is channel 35 so I'm gonna tell that's probably out of your frame I'm gonna tell you to be acting on 35 all right, great. And threshold, it's just, I could do 10 on every one, because remember, all these key spikes are the exact same thing. And um, now, oh my God, I can just musically do so much with this gate. You know, I'm not dependent on a ghost stroke or a higher thing or a lower thing. All before just dependent on the audio input. This is going to act perfectly how I want it to act. I can change its, its hold time, its length. Uh, I can either do other things, which is super dope, where um, on other layers to the snare, like other rooms, I can even slow the attack, right? Because talking again about the physics of mixing and moments of impact that have to be mono, like a snare hit, bang, a kick hit, bang. Sometimes it's really cool to uh, get other things, like even bottom snares, get, other, get them out of the way of that initial transient, right? There's a, there's a, a French amazing techno band called Daft Punk, and I uh, read an interview with those guys, and they literally, like, they go in to... The microscopically to like every bass sound, everything, and like on the on the ten milliseconds of the, every kick attack, literally nothing exists in the mix. So in that instantaneous moment of that kick track, these simple machines, these speakers that can only push and pull out, have all the space they want to just go bam and mono, and and that's how they part of how they give it to you that gorgeous. So anyway, I'm just, I'm rolling through scenarios of these advantages of programming your gates, taking the time, it's not quick mixing, programming your gates to, um, to get what you want. A little more, a little more release. All right, I don't want to waste too much time. And... If you remember before, where's the... If you remember before, we had that tom bleed. All right, this is muted. Now, that's out of the way. Imagine if that had hi-hats on it, how awesome that would be. All right. Um, let me let me pick up some pace now and get this on some other thing. Let me copy. That should work good on the other. I think that should work good on the other snare layers. There's a 57 that we did a 414 on it, which sounds similar. We'll get into choosing our balance and the smart way we do that. And I might the side of the snare drum on this. which we're gonna deal with later, because that, that doesn't phase a line great. But we're gonna show you another secret on how to trick that to work for you with sample delay. And now, so check it out, man. I just wanna hear the difference between these kicks. Okay, now, even though this is a kick sample, I'm gonna put these on these kicks too and I'll tell you why. More physics. Um, main kick gate, what is it? What's the number? All kicks, kick right, left. Main kick is 36. OK. 
Okay, cool. Unmuting the kick drum would be cool too. Did I get the wrong number? Kick spike main, let's put it right next to it. You are the right spike, right? Yep, and you are 36. Move on to another one. Take the other foot. So this is what I'll tell you what I'm theoretically I'm doing now. I'm going to put even though these are samples on the on the kicks that go double kick. I'm going to use the gate. Even though it's a sample, I'm going to use the gate to shorten the length of that sample. So when it's going really fast, that the moment of sub is shorter and it's giving more room to, for those other elements that need to come through to come through. And the one that's center and more rock will be left with more length, you know? Um, if this wasn't now the mix, honestly, I might be just all doing this inside a sampler. Like I may put them in like battery, like in a cell mm -hmm. where I could, you know, always, I just leave them as a sample, but, um, and, and, and have a lot of flexibility like with battery, with, with uh, the attack, attack to case sustain release and distortion and, and EQ. But, um, you know, it also gets you into trouble. I think a lot of times when it comes to mixing with MIDI instruments, you should, you should print them because years down the line when you have to recall them, you don't have a lot of these MIDI instruments and stuff like that. So I've chosen to do this. I've chosen to do this here with... Uh, with the printed audio. All right, let's get these, what's up? Let's get these gates working on these other ones. Nice gate. Right foot. Key spike right, let me put it right next to it, make sure I do have, I definitely have the right key spike. Kick right foot. Yeah, you look like, nope, you're not the right one. Aha! So it's, I labeled it wrong, so I just figured out. Okay, you are you. That's what's going on. And you are 37. Right, there it is, no attack. What did I just do? Did you hear what I just did? I just shortened that. And it's released. Great. Let's do that over here, but we need a new number. And find its other spike. Those are all kicks. I think it's this Y. That's you, you're 43. 43. And that's what I copied over, by the way, from before. It's the same, same 10 millisecond hold, shorter, fourth. And let's get, um, we don't need, we don't need, we don't need, I, I don't think we need it on the, I could do it for the sake of doing it, but I'm not going to, I know I'm not going to shorten or alter the length or decay of the main kick. Then don't 
Don't so worry about let's it. pass on it. Get these key spikes in their own little area. So on and so forth. And oh, here's another cool. Here's another cool thing that I would most likely do. And this is another area. Let's just give you one really cool example of where this method be super cool. I remember there being a mono room, right? Awesome. Awesome. Let's make it. Let's take. Let's take the mono room. Maybe we'll use the mono room as a mono room. So let's make a copy of it. And this will be used as like a snare, you know, spark. I don't know. How's that for a good name? Works. Right? I think so. All right, let's bring you up by the snares then. get the snare key on it. And that just became just a, a blast for just the snare moments. Again, if there, was sim if there were symbols, blah, 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 you'd hear this dramatic thing. All I can really show you with bleed element on this one is the, where the toms bleed in. But I care about that. I really care about that because believe me, when I stack all these together in the end, if all those toms are coming through too many things, it's gonna get, it's gonna be a problem. But let's do something crazy with this. So that's kind of a cool thing to have. Quite a difference. For, so, and I have to worry about it on I have to worry about it on tom moments. Let's let's also solo the toms. So cool. So yeah, so am I still on this? Am I on the right gate? You know, look, I could change this length of this. Or I could make it just this thing. And believe it or not, when you, those little splats, splats of white noise, that didn't sound so cool there when I was just soloing a sample kick and a drum, but those little white noise splats, those are coming from room mics. Mm -hmm. Those distorted room mics can be super. When you put all the drums together, all the and all the cymbals and everything together, and all the guitars, those little white noise, those momentary white noise splats can be super great for your snare drum sound. Really give it presence. It's in a way uh, can act as a better bottom snare mic. Mm -hmm. so the bottom snare mic gives you a splat of high end. This is you know it's a different character in that. It can often substitute for bottom snare mic could be better or or just be something different i'm not going to use it like that i'm going to musically give it power for 20 milliseconds which is about the length of the snare and i'm going to have its release just not super long because i've got longer releases on the actual stereo room mics Plus, obviously you can hear the metallic ring signature of Chris Adler's drum sound. And that's very important for selling this band. I don't want to get too much in the way of that. I like to give it a little rock ambience, but I don't want to, when we actually get to the details of the mix, I'm not going to overdo this because I don't, I want, 
I want to, I want to, uh, I want to sell Chris Adler's drums. He's very proud in particular of his drums and he chooses great drums and it's him and we need to sell who he is because we all can't sound the same. We all have to have our own identity, right? Cool.